Good evening, everybody. We are so happy to have you here tonight. And tonight, the topic of this webinar is learn how to balance your hormone levels for fat loss in 10 days. And when I say balance, I, I mean control and how to get them to work in your favor for fat loss. Now, before we get started, I do have a awesome four set comparison photo here of Alyssa. She's done a fantastic job. And just to be clear, oftentimes when you see before and after photos, you don't really know what's in, in between. You don't know what's in the middle. And tonight, I wanted to show that in this photo set. And this was taken 10 months ago, okay? So she made a lot of, she had a lot of fat loss her first three months. And then the next three or four months, she built a lot of muscle. You can see more muscle tone in her arms and uh, legs and, and shoulders. And then the last photo, we stripped off uh, nine more pounds of fat. And so you can really, you can really see the success here in the last photo. So this is a, a, a big positive and we want to always encourage people to sustain their program. It doesn't do you much good if, if you can't follow a program more than a month or two. So we want sustainability and long term. With that being said, let's get cranked up here tonight. So why the hormone concern from women? I can't tell you how often I got asked questions from women and, and in fact this was how I got this idea for the webinar tonight was it was people said well how do I balance hormone levels how do I control hormone levels and why is that why, why do why would women even ask that why would that be on their mind well I'm gonna tell you that and I'm gonna answer that question not just yet but in a second I wanna make another point first so the point I wanna make first is I always say to the women well, which hormones and they look at me with a bewildered, perplexed look on their face. Like I just asked them, you know, what their favorite planet was or something crazy. And they look at it and, and the point is they don't know what to say. They don't, they, don't, they don't even know what I'm talking about. So they're asking about hormones, but they don't even know what hormones are or what they're even, what, which hormones they're even asking about. Because there's a whole lot of different hormones in the body, and we're going to discuss a few of them tonight, the most important ones that affect your fat loss, in my opinion. This is just my opinion now. And um, so I ask them which hormones, and they just, they don't, they don't even know. So, and that brings us back to the question I just asked a second ago, which is, where do they hear this from? Who's planting the seed in their mind about hormones? If they don't even know which hormones to ask about, well, where's it coming from? Well, here's where it's coming from. Diet fads, commercials. It's a hormone problem. I saw an ad for a medical weight loss clinic on Facebook. And here's what the ad said. I didn't write it up here. It's so pernicious. But here's what it said. If you are eating healthy and you are exercising and you can't lose weight or burn fat, then you have a hormone problem. Well, you just described everybody in every gym across the country. I mean, I mean, there, there's 20 women in your local gym. Me, some men too, but mostly women that, that think they're eating clean or eating healthy and are in there five, six days a week and can't get their body fat to budge. Okay, so the correct response to that is, what that tells me is you're not really eating healthy. Because if you eat healthy nutrition and you exercise correctly, you will burn body fat. You know, you might not be ripped. You might not have a six pack. You might not have super lean legs like Alyssa did. You might not. But you can still make awesome progress and look really dang good. Now, with that being said, that's the problem. That's why. Because they hear it on the commercials, and there's all sorts of pills now on TV, and now they're wanting to convince women it's not a, no, you're really eating healthy. You really are. It's okay. Rice cakes and tuna and veggies, that's okay. It's a hormone problem. Buy our pills. Do you see the pernicious? Do you see how pernicious that is? So that's where they get it from. Now, hormones, now let me let me make it let me explain this. Hormones can take the calorie the calorie component out of the fat loss equation. What does that mean? Well, we all know to burn fat, for the, not for the most part, you got to eat less or 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 basically less calories than you burn. That's just basic math science okay we get that but hormones can prevent that the hormones all four of the hormones I discussed tonight you can I've seen women that are 
eating way, they're eating twigs and berries. You've heard me say that expression. They're eating way below maintenance. They're eating twigs and berries, and they they um, they can't burn body fat. Now, I didn't say they're eating the right nutrition they should be eating. I didn't say that. But they're eating way below maintenance, and they might be overtrained, they might not be. But the point is, is that even if you're eating below maintenance, then your hormones, you can still be fat. Not skinny fat. You can be like this woman here who is a shining example of a bunch of topics tonight that I'll keep bringing her up. Her name is Bonnie, by the way. And she lost over a foot from her waist in less than a year working with me. Now, let me, let me get back to my point here, is that even if you're eating less and eating what you think are healthy foods, if you do have a few hormone imbalances, that can take the calories out of the equation. I didn't say healthy food. I didn't say the right foods, because the right foods can override a hormone imbalance. But just eating less won't solve the problem. That's, that's what that means. Now, you don't have a unique problem. There's a lot of women out there that do have insulin problems. They do have thyroid issues. I, I think it's probably less than, I don't know, 40%. But when you deal with women in their 40s and 50s that are obese, most all of them have thyroid issues, uh, poor, poor insulin sensitivity, if not type 2 diabetics. Um, and they have an, an overabundance of estrogen. And we're going to get into these more. Or high cortisol levels. And so that's not a, a very unique problem. A lot of women have these issues. Now, you don't need medicine for that. You don't need to go to a medical weight loss place and have them pump you up full of medicine and pills to burn fat. Healthy nutrition will burn the fat. Okay? Don't believe that lie for a second. Okay? And, and that's what I said again. When it comes to fat loss, you don't... Let me get it up here. You don't require special medication to burn fat. That's what these medical weight loss places and these diet ads we see on TV. Oh, if, if you... If you're... Uh, women have hormones and you need a special pill to burn fat, or if you're eating healthy and exercising and can't burn fat, then you probably have a hormone problem. No, you're just not exercising and eating correctly. And second of all is that you don't need a special medication to burn fat. Now, I'm not saying don't take a, a, a thyroid medication from your doctor. I've had clients that have that. I'm not saying that. Do what your doctor says for your thyroid health. Do that. What I'm saying is that you don't need to purchase a fat loss or weight loss, what they claim is specific pill or medication to alter your hormones to have to experience healthy fat loss. That's what I'm saying. Okay? And I'm going to prove it all tonight. Women who aren't eating, women who aren't eating, who aren't even eating right are always screaming, I have a hormone problem. And once again, it goes back to this. It's what they see on TV, medical weight loss, diet fads. They, they, they see it, so they think because they're in the gym six days a week and are eating twigs and berries or quote-unquote eating clean, which I hate that word, they think they've got a hormone problem. And they may have some, but it can be fixed with healthy nutrition. That's the whole point. You may have a little bit of it, but it can easily be fixed with the right food. And I'm going to... I, I don't want to keep going back to Bonnie on this slide because I am in the next few slides, but... Um, you can, like I just said, you can balance your hormone levels by what you put in your mouth. You can undermine, you can overcome, you can offset a hormone imbalance by eating the right foods. That's the big point of this webinar tonight. That's what I'm trying to educate people on. Let's keep rolling here. Okay, what hormones do you need to balance? Okay, number one, estrogen. Estrogen, and I'm going to get into these individually as we go, but let me just let me just list these now, and I'll get into them in a minute. Number two, insulin. So many people have insulin issues, and I'm going to explain that more in a minute. Thyroid. I've had I've had dozens of clients over the last five six years that are on thyroid medication. That's okay. You can still burn fat. Cortisol, the sneaky little cortisol. We're going to talk about that more. Now, let me, let me back up. These are just four, and I don't even, you could probably Google it and find out. There, there's a bunch of hormones in the human body. But for women, specifically women and men, but mostly women, these are the top four. These are the top four that I found need to be balanced, that are out of whack. Sometimes you'll need doctor medication. 
But the doctor, just to be clear, if you do take doctor medication, doctor prescribed medication for a hormone imbalance, you don't need that medication to burn fat. I, I, I want to be clear on that. Take it if the doctor says to. But you don't need that to burn fat. That's not, your fat loss doesn't hinge on that. It hinges on healthy food. All right, estrogen. Estrogen is the female sex hormone, okay? That's why in, in, the male sex hormone is simply testosterone. That's why women, on the average, for the most part, all things being equal, have a higher body fat percentage, a significantly higher body fat percentage than men, okay? So now some females have a high test level, naturally. And some females are naturally really lean and even ripped without steroids. There's some that are. Okay? And when you have a high estrogen level, and if you are a woman that has an extraordinarily high estrogen level, you're going to have a higher body fat. You're going to have increased body fat because of that. And this is very high, and it's very commonplace in endomorphs. Now, Bonnie, who I talked about, who you saw her after photo on the previous slide, she is someone that one of her, she's very high in estrogen, and she's an endomorph. Endomorph is a pear-shaped, a round-shaped person, uh, a, a heavy-set person, a higher, a more obese person. There's someone that she had your three, I don't want to get off topic, but your three somatotypes, ectomorph, long limbs, predominantly slow twitch, uh, sim uh, hypersensitive nervous system, uh, your, your mesomorph is your genetic muscle man or muscle woman. It's super strong, lean, and they're rare. And then your, your third is your endomorph, which is your round, your higher body fat, your soft um, type body type, or somatotype rather. And, there, and there's, there's subtypes of each, don't get me wrong, but that's the point. So, so she, she's a perfect fit for, for an endomorph. She's, so she's, she's someone that definitely has high estrogen levels. And she's a grandmother, by the way. She has grandkids, so she's in her 50s. So she's someone that, that has her estrogen levels are out of whack. But you're going to see some more of her in a minute. Okay, insulin, in my opinion, is the biggest factor. Now, this is going to be a long slide here, so bear with me, and I'm going to explain the role of insulin. Let's have laser-focused attention here. Pay attention as I explain. Now, this, in my opinion, is, this is such an unbelievably excellent, precise image, diagram, breakdown of what happens. Okay, now remember this. There's three, one, two, three, four components I want you to think of here. The first component is the cell, a red blood cell. Let's just say in this in this situation, it's a muscle cell. Okay. The next is the receptor site. Think of the receptor site as a door, an entryway into the cell. The next object in here is the insulin. Think of the insulin, and it's just like a little round keychain, and the key. So the insulin represents a key that unlocks the receptor site. Now, why does it unlock the receptor site? It unlocks the receptor site because it allows glucose to enter the bloodstream. Excuse me a minute. Thanks, guys. I had to blow my nose. Appreciate it. It's okay. So here's what we want. When you eat a food chicken breast, meatball, pasta, milk, candy bar, it doesn't matter. The food is going to be converted into glucose in the bloodstream. That glucose, when glucose hits the bloodstream, now some food causes more than others, but when the glucose hits the bloodstream, the pancreas is going to secrete insulin. The insulin is a, the most powerful storage hormone in the body. It promotes glucose disposal. And insulin acts as a shuttle bus for glucose. Here's all that means. The glucose is in the bloodstream from the food you ate. The insulin is secreted from the pancreas and it's a shuttle bus. It pushes, it drives that glucose into a muscle cell to be stored for later use. When the glucose enters the, enters the muscle cell, it's stored as muscle glycogen to be used later for weightlifting or driving your car or walking your dog or going to the supermarket, whatever. It's used for energy down the road. And it's also 
disposed of into liver glycogen storage. Okay? Now, I'll repeat that. Glucose disposal is in muscle cells and liver as glycogen for later use. Now, let me go back to the insulin, the keys, and the receptor. Here's, let me, exp bear with me. Okay. Many people, the ability for the key of insulin, Everlin's and represents a key, and the ability for that key to unlock the receptor site is dependent upon the sensitivity of the receptor. Okay? The key is all, the insulin's always going to work. Insulin's not the problem. People say, well, you know, insulin. So let, let me let me be let me be let me be clear on this insulin. The insulin here is always going to work. It's the receptor site. Now, too much insulin can damage it. But we'll get to that in a minute. I won't get ahead of myself. You've heard of people that have very. I, I for example, I have very sensitive. I have a high sensitivity, a high insulin sensitivity. So what that means is that I can eat more carbs than most people. Well, what are you talking about? If you eat carbohydrates. The higher the carbs you eat, the more carbs you eat, the higher the glycemic index of the food you eat, the more glucose is going to be in the bloodstream. And the higher the glycemic index of the food, or the higher the carbohydrate of the food or amount, the more insulin is pumped out of the pancreas. Now, if that happens too much or over time, what happens is you get people that are, I don't want to get ahead of myself, you develop what's called insensitive receptors. Now, a lot of girls, females that are, and guys too, that are endomorphs. Remember on the other slide? Endomorphs. That are, they have poor insulin sensitivity. They're, they're insensitive. Their insulin receptor sites are insensitive. So, the insulin's here. But if you have very sensitive receptors, that door's going to fly right open and suck up and absorb and saturate all that glucose. If you have poor receptor site sensitivity, and some people just don't have it as good. A lot, most females don't have very good sensitivity. Some do, but most don't. Obese women, women that struggle with a high body fat, have poor, poor receptor site sensitivity. So you don't want to have a ton of insulin. You want to have lower glycemic index foods, and less amount of carbohydrates, and the right amount of carbohydrates. Are you with me? Let me know if you're with me. Hit me up if, you, if you're confused. So, let's keep moving here. Now, what if you have really poor sensitive receptor site and sensitivity? Oftentimes, that's common in type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes, otherwise known as adult onset diabetes, comes from people, not always, but oftentimes that ate too much junk food their whole life, too much sugary sweets, and the pancreas still shot out the insulin, but the insulin beat the receptor site to crap. It beat it up, okay? So it's so desensitized and blunted and beat up, it doesn't respond as well. So like I said here, type 2 diabetes, poor insulin response by receptor sites and cells. Now, here's the problem. You're like, well, what is this? how does this matter? This is why if someone that's naturally higher body fat, endomorph obese, this is where the problem starts. If you eat a bunch of carbs, even if they're really healthy, the insulin's still going to pump, but those little receptor sites ain't going to fly open very well. Okay? So where does that glucose go? Some will go to the liver. Well, they can't get the muscle cells or liver cells very well because the receptor sites are poor. So there was a lot of those carbs, or the glucose rather, that came from the carbs is going to go to be stored in fat cells. And all that extra insulin is going to act as a shuttle bus and promote it into fat cells even more. The excess insulin goes to fat cells. I'm sorry, the excess glucose. That's why folks, the insulin in all females, the insulin, understanding the role of insulin is vital. And you can, guys can ask me more about this later, but let's keep moving here. So how to combat the insulin issue, okay? Number one, it's part of beating diabetes. That's how you can beat type 2 diabetes. By beat, I don't mean make it go away. What I mean is that be successful in spite of it. Like Bonnie did here. The woman lost a freaking foot off her waist and she's a grandmother. Now, I don't know what her body fat is here. Probably in the low 20s. But it was probably in the 40s here. Okay, so she's not 12% body fat, but she looks great. She's got muscles. She looks great for a 
we'll move in our 50s. So next is you combat it by you eating the right amount of the right complex cruciferous leafy green multicolored low glycemic carbs. You've got to. If you don't know how to manage your carbohydrates, you are in for a rumble. You're in for a throwdown. You're in for a battle that's going to frustrate you beyond belief. I promise you that. You got to eat the right amount of the right healthy fats. And believe me, you can't eat many many carbs. You can't eat many what I call complex carbs. So, or some people call them starchy carbs, but you can't eat many. So you're going to need fats. You can't be afraid to eat fats, but they got to be the right kind with the right foods and the right amounts. I'm a fan of, for people like this, and I, I trained a woman like this in person uh, like six or seven years ago who type 2 diabetes, high insulin, had all sorts of problems, fibromyalgia, you name it. And, and, and they're best about an hour after they eat breakfast, so maybe two hours. So, so basically the, the mid-morning range, the 9, 10 o'clock range, is typically when their energy levels are the highest. And that's when you can benefit the most from exercise. And you want brief weight training. You don't want to be in the gym 50 minutes. You don't want to be in there an hour. You want to get in, you want to execute a warm-up, lift for 35, 40 minutes, and get the heck out the door. And if you do do metabolic, or as people call them, cardio workouts, they really shouldn't be more than 15, maybe 20 minutes tops at the very most. So you want to get in, hit it, get out. All right? Now, next is thyroid. Okay. The thyroid and the thyroid hormone regulates metabolism. And what is your metabolism? Your metabolism, quite simply, is the rate at which your body burns calories. Now, this young lady here, Candace, you guys have seen her photos all over my Facebook page. Uh, she's been up on my top banner up until a few days ago for like six months, and she's done awesome. And she's someone who, number one, uh, has high estrogen, has insulin insensitivity, doesn't process, ins doesn't respond well to insulin, and has thyroid. So she's all three, similar to Bonnie. Or actually, Bonnie doesn't have thyroid, but she has all three. She's on thyroid medication. In fact, she's um, has Hashimoto's and takes medication for that. And she's actually has a video testimonial on my face on my YouTube page. And she talks for like, I think, 15, 20 minutes and explains um, and explains it. She's on thyroid medication. So with her, it's even more important that she uses precise, pinpoint accuracy with her nutrition. Okay? And like I just said, the right food plays an even greater role in the increase of metabolism through digestion. Remember now, we want to increase your metabolism. She's already on some meds for it, but we need to do an even better job with it through the, dige through the process of digestion. So we want to promote the metabolic process of digestion. And what that means is that you, by eating enough of the right foods, the digestive process can actually speed up your metabolism. And I talk about that in my uh, webinar, How to Speed Up Your Metabolism. Um, so you guys can check that out later. And also, th this is why it's so important that you have the cruciferous, leafy green, multicolored, uh, rich foods and cruciferous vegetables and carbs is because your body has to, your digestive system has to work its ass off to digest all that stuff. And the harder your digestive system works, the more energy it burns. When you take protein shakes, smoothies, bars, they negate this effect because they're processed and refined, number one, so they're, they don't have to be as digested as much, so they don't contribute at all to the metabolic payload. Does that make sense? So protein shakes, and plus shakes and smoothies are liquid. And liquid is not digestive, liquid is absorbed. So, now I get this, but, 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 but I have thyroid disease. Can you help me? Guys, I, Candace, uh, and, 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 and you just saw our photos, and now, and now right here, this Trisha actually posted this on my Facebook page last, or a couple, I think last week, and you can read it, and I'll read it for you. I'm on the OMEP. I've lost eight pounds so far and two inches around my waist. I have to say I'm very pleased as I haven't had this much progress in one month ever 
since I was diagnosed with, diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Thank you, Jeff, so much. What, what do you know about that? Gee, I guess healthy food really does, really does overcome the hormone imbalance. Guys, this is not rocket science. Now, you need to know how to combine the foods correctly. You need to know how to put them together. But let's keep rolling. So, let's talk about cortisol. Cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that skyrockets when stress levels increase. And it, and it burns. And, a, and when, You're always going to have cortisol. But when it gets too high and you, you increase too much of it, you can, it actually burns or, or destroys muscle and it can increase body fat. Now, stress can be physical or emotional or mental, and I'm going to talk about that more in a minute, okay? So it, it, it doesn't have to be physically overtraining. But the most common example, or the greatest example of this is the person who does cardio and weight six days a week, eats twigs and berries, and still has a flabby belly and flabby thighs. We've all seen them in the gym. They might be obese, but sometimes they're not obese. They're just skinny fat or a little bit pudgy, whatever the case is. There's someone, their body's, what I like to say, their adrenal glands are spewing cortisol like a garden sprinkler. Okay? Now, let me make this point. Let me back up a little bit. Let me take that away. You can, have, you can be a couch potato and have a high cortisol level if you're under anxiety, if you're under stress, if your mom has cancer, if your dad died, if your kid uh, flunked out of school, if you lost your job, if you have a tough job, if you're in a relationship problems. It can be anything. When you worry your anxiety, stress levels go up, you can pump out cortisol. It doesn't only come from overtraining, so it can come from either. Now the worst is when both happen, when you have overtraining and when you have uh, worry and anxiety on top of that. So the solution is you lower cortisol by increasing insulin. And guess what? Every time you eat food, good food or bad food, you release insulin. Now if you eat good food, the insulin's managed better and the glucose disposal is managed better. So every time you eat, you're increasing insulin. Your pancreas secretes insulin. So, so if you're eating frequently or regularly, that's going to help. And obviously, you've got to eat more of the right food and just usually exercise less. People that are into fitness and are trying to burn fat but can't and have hormone imbalances, that are into fitness, that's the, that's the key word here, they're not couch potatoes. They're not missing workouts. They're usually overdoing it. They're doing too much. Okay, here's three foods that can balance your hormone levels. It'll help. Simple foods. Olive oil, very healthy fat, grapefruit, celery. Celery is actually a, a what I call a negative calorie food because it takes more energy to digest it than, it than it actually contains. It's so fibrous and, and it's so much roughage. Grapefruit is, um, grapefruit is a, uh, you know, grapefruit is a, is a well, I think it's, it, it can actually give you a clean flow or, or burst of energy. It's almost like a natural stimulant, and it actually suppresses your appetite. Um, if you have cravings, eat a grapefruit. It'll go right away. Um, so these are three things in this. I'm not saying you want to eat four grapefruits and a pile of celery for a meal. I'm not saying that. I'm saying these are things that are excellent to snack on in between meals people on my program, I often tell them to add some of these in between meals if they're hungry or at the end of the day, you know, throw in something else. But these are things that you, you show me someone with imbalanced hormone levels, if we add these in, good things are going to happen. It's going to help some. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take care of something, if that makes sense. So now that's basically it. Now the next half of the webinar is not half, probably the next 10 minutes. Excuse me, I got a stuffy nose tonight from the allergies, but this is what I want to say. This is a reader Q&A. Now, let me, let me make a point here. This person is someone, and she might even be on the webinar. I don't know for certain yet. I'll have to check. But she asked me, she emailed me this. She was on my last webinar, and she emailed me this question about two or three weeks ago, and I actually emailed her yesterday 
and said, I'm going to put your question, I'm going to answer it and discuss it and break it down on my webinar tonight. So she knows it's going up, just to be clear. And she actually thanked me for it. She wants me to do it. So I'm not going to say her name because she knows who it is. I'm not going to... I, I'm writing her entire email, but I left out one thing. I left out the diet, the food she eats. She wrote out all the food she eats in her diet. I left that out intentionally. And the reason I left it out is because there's so many other problems and she, that... She wanted me to troubleshoot her diet. And you'll see the question in a, in a second here when I pull it up. But there's so many other problems that that's the least of her worries. And I'm going to explain why, point by point, a surgical dissection is what I will do. I'm going to be surgical in my approach. A point by point counter. Now, let me make another point. Something I'm also seeing a lot of is people that go to a, have a personal trainer. That they go see, it might be in groups. It might be one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not talking necessarily a boot camp. I'm talking about a gym trainer. And they'll go see a trainer, and then they'll, they'll make some progress, you know, but they hit a plateau. They can't break, they can't burn the fat. It won't come off. They want more. And they come to me, and they want me, they want my help. Now, here's the problem I have with that. They're paying a trainer who can't solve their problem. But they're coming to me, who they're not paying and wanting help. Do, do we see the problem with that? So just, just, just think about that conundrum, if you will. That justification, if you will. It's almost an oxymoron. Think about that and let that marinate on your mind as I go over this reader Q&A. Guys, the reason I'm pausing here before this is I want to set the table. This is a big problem, and I've gotten a lot of emails from people more so than ever. I've gotten like a dozen of them in the last couple of weeks from people. I've never gotten this many. And it's disturbing. And I'm all for helping people. I got dozens of webinars, Facebook, videos, articles. I'm here for you guys. But we got a problem when you're paying someone that's not helping you and then you want my help but you're not willing to pay. And we'll, I don't want to be mean to people, but let, let's get going and I'll read through this here. So here's the question. Hi there. I have been a fan on Facebook for quite a while, love it, and have been inspired by you uh, more and more to develop more discipline around food prep and packing. Now, I'm not sure I believe this. I don't, I'm not sure I believe this. And, and I'm not picking on this, this reader, or this, this, this uh, not a reader, this, this writer who wrote in, this follower, because this is a blueprint. This is an absolute clone. This is identical to dozens of other emails I've gotten like this. And it's frustrating to me because it's like what I said on my Facebook page is going in one ear and out the other. Not for everybody, but a significant portion and more so than normal. And so I'm not picking on this person. And if, and if you're watching, I'm not being mean or attacking you. I, I want this, I'm a fan of tough love, no BS. You know, put it in your face, but be real. You know, and, and but offer a solution. So, and you guys can ask questions when we get off this, if you want. That's fine. But here, let me let me wrap this up. So, anyway, here's what she says next. I have lost 60 pounds since January. I started with getting a personal trainer. I do weights 50 minutes, two to three times per week with him, and cardio 30 to 40 minutes after weight training. Some days, steady bike or or the elliptical. There is no faster way to diminish progress than from weight training, from weight training than to do cardio after weights. And here's why. After you lift weights and weight train, your number one priority, you, you want to begin the recovery process as fast as possible. Take a nap, go eat, whatever. And when you go do cardio, my lord, for 30 to 40 minutes after you've already been lifting weights for 50 minutes, you're going to prolong the recovery process. You're going to drive your body deeper into, in, into overtraining. My trainer is a no-nonsense, traditional bodybuilding, old-school guy. Lots of deadlifts, squats, bench press, etc. Now, I'm confused for a minute. Why is an obese woman who wants fat loss and muscle tone doing a bodybuilding-style workout with deadlifts and bench press? 
and I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Okay, guys, this is off, but bear with me. She says she keeps a food journal consistently and has been slowly but surely making progress. And my response is that if you're journaling your food, you're not focusing on it. Here, here's why I say that. And I've said this before. We don't ever journal our, I don't have, I never suggest writing down your meals. Because once you eat a meal, it's done with. It's over with. You don't need to write your food. You don't need to journal your food. You should have a printed out sheet of paper with your program on it in advance that you read. Once you've, and I've always, guys, you've heard me say a million times, no matter what happened the last meal, forget about it and always eat the next meal like it has a history and life of its own. Put, the, put, put your last meal behind you and always look towards your next meal. No matter what happened the last meal, you can eat your next meal like it's the most important meal of your life. We don't write down the meals we ate. We already have all our meals printed out in advance. So this is nothing I've ever preached. His mandate, meaning a trainer, is that 90% of weight loss success is clean food. If this is the case, wouldn't the prudent thing to do be to focus on the 90% by signing up for a customized nutrition plan? After all, your own trainer even admits that your eating is 90% of your fat loss gain. It's 90% of the game. <laughs> I mean... Are you guys with me on this? Am I like talking to myself? And she's not the only one. There's dozens of women out there like this. Uh, it's, it's, it's puzzling. I've recently plateaued. Well, duh. I, I believe it. I've recently plateaued. Have not been able to budge in eight weeks. Not seen much change overall. But have noticed more definition of my arms and shoulders. Well, it's probably from the bench press. <laughs> Well, that's because you're not, you've not, you're not eating or training correctly. In fact, you're digging yourself deeper and deeper with each, you're digging your plateau deeper. You're increasing your plateau. You're not overcoming it. You're increasing your plateau with each passing day. She's not the only one, guys. I'm 5'6 and weigh 153 currently. I don't know my body fat, but I'm strong and pretty muscular. Now, she sent me a photo. She did send me a photo. I'm not going to post it, but my guesstimate, and I'm very good at this, I'm very accurate, is probably 28% body fat. Maybe I'm being generous. 28% body fat, okay? Currently, an average workout day is with food. Now, I deleted her food because that's not the problem. That ain't, the, that ain't her number one problem. It's off. It's her, her food is screwed up, but that's not her number one problem. I shop, prep, measure, 90% of my food, da, 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 drink water, I do not have treats, blah, 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 blah. Now, I am planning and focusing on my goals and intentions for this fall. Always feel a new sense of fresh start in September with back to school. I do not have an end weight loss goal. My goal is to blast out of this plateau. <laughs> Eat and exercise smartly and effectively. You're not doing either. In fact, that's what's holding you back. Is this making sense? You're not training correctly. You're not, you're not doing any training correctly. It's what's hurting you. Your eating's way off. You're, what you're doing, what you think is smart and effective, it's not. It's ignorant and incorrect. It's poor and inefficient. It's ineffective in hindering you. It, it, I mean, do you guys want tough love? Do you want me to keep it real or do you want me to pat you at your back and say, yeah, keep doing cardio? Guys, we're trying to get better here. Ultimately, I would love to step out in a bikini with a pancake flat to find abs on my family vacation. Long-term goal is to maintain great health and fitness, to model this to my three young kids, and demonstrate that it is possible by leading by example. I love your feedback and troubleshooting. Let's see if she still does. <laughs> Sincerely and with respect and great deal of gratitude. Blast out? 
the fastest way out of your hole is to stop digging. But you're not, you're not leading by example. You're, 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 not, you're, you're journaling, which I've said not to do. You're not, an FOF, by the way, means focus on food. It means get the hell out of the gym, get your taters in the kitchen, and get to cooking, eat your next meal. Focus, you're not FOF. You're not focusing on food. You're not training correctly. You haven't done what I've said to do in my articles or on my webinars. People you were, and then, she, and then I put people, here's the thing, in the game of life, people you respect and have gratitude for, you're compelled to take action for. You're compelled to pull the trigger for. You're compelled to have faith, trust, and confidence in. You're compelled to follow their lead. You're compelled to get on board, and you're compelled to sign up. Can I be any more blunt? Here's the, here's the conflict, guys, that I talked about before we started here. And I've, I've had it up to my eyeballs. I'm a patient man. You've got to be patient in the fat loss game and to deal with people like this. You've got to be. Okay? But I've had so many people do this. And I used to be a personal trainer. I'm not anymore, but I was for like nine years. They serve a purpose. Most of them aren't very effective. 99% aren't very effective. 10% uh, are okay, and that 1% are really good, okay? And you know what? I wasn't that effective sometimes as a trainer myself, but I'm a lot better now as a program designer. So here's the problem I'm getting at is that you're paying someone for help. They're not equipped to provide. So you're seeking help from someone you're not paying. Now, I'm not going to rant anymore about this because I'm glad you guys are on the webinar, and a lot of you guys probably agree with me. But... You guys have, let me know. Give me a, hell yeah. Give me a, yeah, I understand. Give me a, Jeff, you're on the right page. Give me a, Jeff, you are, you're making sense, brother. You know, I mean, I can't give away any more webinars than I do. I do like a new one at least once a month, and they take a long time to do. So I, I want you people to get a lot out of them. So your message this webinar, outside of the hormone balancing, is get this. So, Give me a shout out of, yeah, man, what's up? I feel you on this. You're right. Does this make sense? Now, I'm going to minimize the screen. It's still going to record. We're still on the webinar. Don't panic. I'm just going to minimize the screen, and I'm going to read your questions, okay? Now, okay. Now, I'm going to get to the questions here. Okay. Let me get these questions going. All right. We're still here. Everybody's here. Let me pull my webinar back up just to see if you guys want to see it. Now, let me get to the questions. Okay. Donna says, that's me. Da, da, da. Kimberly says, how can we tell if hormone levels is what's stopping us from having a successful weight loss? Okay. Kimberly, you really won't know for certain, but you know what I can tell you is certainly stopping you from having successful weight loss, Kimberly? I'll tell you what, what, it, what, what it for certainly is your food. If you have a cr handcrafted, customized, personalized, well-designed nutrition program, that will solve the problem. Your eating is what's stopping you. Well, what if I have a hormone imbalance? If you watch my webinar, I just proved, I gave anecdotal evidence time after time and commonsensical evidence and even um, empirical evidence that also demonstrates that you can overcome those four hormones that I went over through effective nutrition. So th that's the long answer. The short answer is fix your nutrition. And I'll be blunt. Sign up. <laughs> That'll fix it. I mean, I, I can't be any more clear. You know, I'm just going to start getting blunt with you guys. Okay. And Kimberly says, keep it real. We like that. Okay, uh, Donna. Donna says, you're making sense, brother. Yeah, I mean, guys, it's, we want you here. We want you on board watching webinars, and I got no problem. And Donna might be one of these people, um, and I had somebody else. I think it's Sean somebody, I forgot her name, um, who, I, I mean, and, and, and they're, they understand where I'm coming from. They're always, you got it, you know. And, and to their fairness, they don't ask many questions, but they go to my webinars, they read my Facebook posts, um, but the, the, the stuff that I'm getting a little bit ticked off about that I want you guys to learn from is, the, is, is those people that aren't even following what I'm saying on my Facebook page. They're not following what I'm saying on my webinars. 
And, and now I'm going to get, but, well, let me, I don't get ahead of myself. But what's happening is, then they're saying, oh, troubleshoot my diet. Well, guys, I'm not going to do that for you. Now, occasionally, I will do it on Facebook. But I don't do everybody's. And, you know, I tell you what you're doing wrong. Troubleshoot means identify the problem. Troubleshoot doesn't mean find a solution. Okay? So that's just, that's just, a, that's, that's just, that's not even half the battle. That's just about 10% of the battle. But, pardon me, but um, I get that a lot. And, but if I ever ask it on my Facebook page, you're, you're certainly willing to, you're welcome to, rather, to post. But for someone, I'm not going to keep repeating it. I've said it enough. So, um, do we have any more questions here? Let me, I'm going to take a peek up here real quick. You guys are doing awesome. Um, let's see here. What do we got here? We got some, well, we got some good guys on the call tonight. I mean, we got some awesome people on the call, yeah. We got some good folks on the call tonight. So, are there any more questions? And I know, I know, um, uh-oh. Bear with me, guys. This, this, this is a little bit uh, slow here. Do we have any more questions? Type them in the chat column. Do you want me to go back and pull up any slides? Is there anything you, you want me to show you? Are there any questions you have about... i tell you what, you can ask me a question right now about your food. I'll try, if you tell me right now about a meal you're eating, I'll troubleshoot it for you. I'll do that right now. If there's anything, I'll, I'm not going to do a whole, you know, but just if you want to write something in and, and I'll do my best. While we're waiting on people to type it in, if you would, if you guys don't mind, go to my Facebook page, and uh, and after the webinar is over with, and you can post it on the wall, uh, you can post it under a thread, it doesn't matter, but just post it on my Facebook page. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, we'll post it under the thread, the thread uh, with the registration link. Just post if you like the webinar, you didn't like it, you're a jerk, you're an asshole, you're a meanie, you're, 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 you're tough love, you're no BS, you, uh, I learned a few things, you're a jerk, I liked it, it was good but you're still mean. You can write whatever you want, but the only rule is you got to be honest. So that's your, that's, your, that's your courtesy or gift, if you will, to me for doing the webinar. The webinars are free, they're no charge, anybody's welcome. You can ask your questions, but all I ask in return is if you would please, if you would go and on my Facebook page, just just say hey, you know, comment on the webinar. Hey, I, I never knew that about insulin, or oh, that makes sense.